Nothing about Elon's Twitter takeover went smoothly. This is Elon On April 14th, Elon offered to buy Twitter for $44 billion, a mistake he would later regret deeply. And Twitter agrees. The deal was set. And Elon backed out of it again, because apparently there were too many fake accounts and nobody could say how many Twitter users there actually were. The number of real, unique humans is above 95%. That is what they're claiming. Does anyone have that experience? <laughs> Twitter was like, objection, your honor. Relevance. They were ready to go to court and force him to take the deal. And they did. They fought a bit in court. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. And Elon is like, by the way, that deal is so on. What are we even waiting for? So they put the beef on hold and the judge gives them till the end of October to seal the deal. Elon would buy Twitter to avoid a further trial and he promised advertisement partners that it would definitely not become a free-for-all hellscape. Then, October 28th, Elon Musk officially bought Twitter. Let that sink in. He announced, the bird is freed. But I can tell if what happened next was good for the bird. The managers wanted to welcome him and offered their hand. And instead of his own, he gave them their termination letter. Bro took over the company and fired half of it. Already before, he had said that he wanted to let go 75% of Twitter employees. And the day he took over, he started with the top executives. CEO, CFO, all the C's had to leave. It was a clean cut. No hard feelings and no big losses on both sides. They left the company and got like 200 million dollars. Good deal for Musk. Still, the people's feelings were... Nah, so what? You really think he's gonna change Twitter? I think this is just going to be a huge nothing burger that most people are gonna forget about in two weeks because there's not gonna be any meaningful, noticeable difference in the platform itself with Elon Musk at the helm. And realistically, Twitter had nothing to lose. It already wasn't the best place to be on to begin with. There were three possibilities. Either he ruins Twitter, which is good for everyone because he destroyed something toxic, or he improves Twitter, which is also good for everyone, or he does nothing, which means nothing for everyone. So it can't really end bad, can it? Elon introduces the Twitter blue idea. For $20 a month, you would get this verified check. So far, it had been used to show that it's officially the account of a celebrity, company or Danny DeVito. With Twitter blue, everyone would be able to get it if they paid. Basically, a Twitter subscription. But Stephen King was just not having it. What does a random author have to do with this? I don't know, but he complained about it on Twitter. And Elon responded. Huh? He started to bargain with him. It was like when you're at one of those street sales and you tell the salesman guy you don't like what he offers. He immediately started to haggle. Also, like Stephen King was some sort of authority on this topic. Why respond to his opinion and ignore others? Anyways, Elon was like, okay, what about $8 a month then? Stephen King repeated that it's not about the money, it's about the principle. Thanks, great, $8 it is. The idea behind Twitter Blue is to fight bot accounts and scammers, which Twitter has quite a lot of. Hello, your computer has virus. Elon thinks, obviously, no scammer would pay money to promote their scams. I'm sorry, but every scammer would pay money to promote their scams. Look, I just got a YouTube ad from Mr. Beast. He offers me free money. Definitely not a scam. The problem with the paid verification is that now people can create a fake account of, let's say, Mr. Beast and then promote a scam. Mr. Beast! Because of the check mark, many will fall for this. So far, it had meant that the account was real. What happens when a random user pays $8 and changes his name to Elon Musk? Verified check marks exist so people know they follow the real person. Elon completely destroyed this argument by saying, fake accounts already exist, idiot, so your argument has no value. He not even addressed the point. And he was right to do so. Honestly, if you ask me, I don't think anyone would ever abuse that system. And this is what we call foreshadowing. Twitter Blue would also have other perks, like half as many ads. It's not even ad free. Huh? You pay money and still get ads? How would this work? You pull out your phone and scroll through Twitter, and after only one ad, you get to see a fake LeBron James account tweet about his career, and one of your friends goes, 
whoa, was this only one ad on the side instead of two? How cool! And it's also not like Twitter now has many advertisers to begin with. Many of them actually left because they were uncertain about their future with Twitter. Elon is a big fan of free speech, but for companies it just wouldn't look good to have an ad next to someone explaining why children can give consent to what? To put into perspective how bad it was looking for Twitter, 40 civil rights activist groups advised advertisers to leave. Companies like General Motors, Audi and Pfizer did. And then the layoffs began. Previously, Elon had said that he wanted to let go 75% of workers. This had caused some anxiety among them, so he changed his mind and let 50% go. Let's relax, let's play some music. Francis, you're fired, see ya. And this only made sense. Twitter employees posted videos like I started my morning off with an iced matcha from the perch. How delicious this food looks. I played some foosball with my friends to kind of unwind a bit. Found this really cool meditation room that I thought was super neat. Um, I didn't do any yoga, but they have this yoga room if you are a yogi. Had to have our afternoon coffee, so made some espresso. And then before leaving for the day, had some red wine um, that's on tap. This is not productivity, and Twitter was losing money every day. The layoffs and the Twitter subscription were plans to get more money, or at least lose less. He wanted to get as many people to buy Twitter Blue as possible. For the money, of course, but also to fix Twitter's bot problems. Every real Twitter user could now pay $8 and be on top of recommendations, comments and search. If you paid, you were prioritized everywhere. And if you didn't, nobody could find you. Scam accounts and bots who didn't pay were supposed to go to the bottom and vanish. In theory, a good idea. So they launched it. Only there were two little problems. Not every single Twitter user in existence wants to pay $8 for the platform. Some go on Twitter once a week, some don't have the money, and some think it's a waste of money. I mean, you still get ads. You essentially pay money to be seen and share your humble opinion. I don't want to have to pay to speak my mind. And the second problem? Remember when people said that this feature would be used for scamming and trolling? And Elon was like, nah, it won't. The feature was primarily used for scamming and trolling. When Elon had taken over, he had tweeted, comedy is legal now. But I don't think he had any idea of how true that would become and how bad for him. As soon as Twitter Blue was introduced, Someone spent $8 to create a fake verified account of a pharmaceutical company and tweeted Insulin is free now. That would not be a very big brain, economically smart move for the company right there. The stock of Eli Lilly dropped and they lost billions. <coughs> Someone else did the same with Lockheed Martin, claiming it will stop selling weapons to people who abuse human rights. Again, the stock crashed. The companies were not happy. Of course, losing all that money right after the tweets could have been a coincidence. The stock market is random and wacky and you never know what will happen. But there were definitely some people who believed it was real. Some legend also impersonated Nintendo and posted this picture of Mario. Comedy really was legal that day. In all this chaos, the senator Ed Markey asked Elon why people can suddenly impersonate him. Sigma Elon replied, perhaps it is because your real account sounded like a parody to begin with. And usually he would take the W out of this interaction if Marky hadn't had this comeback, telling him Elon's companies were under investigation by authorities. Elon was too stunned to tweet. All these fake accounts scared the advertisers that still collaborated with Twitter. Eli Lilly, the company from before, left Twitter and cost them millions. They weren't happy and some other partners also considered leaving. So some random person tweeted out at Elon saying, uh, you're seriously gonna let them get away with dropping you? I'd maybe name and shame everyone who betrays me. You're really not gonna do anything about them leaving?
Somehow, this convinced Elon, and he threatened to name and shame his customers. Very professional. But he was going through a lot. All these fake accounts. Really a mess. And no one could have foreseen this. And then bang. The exact thing that everyone knew would happen, happened. And some people are acting shocked about it. This is the most predictable situation imaginable that would arise from this system. This Twitter blue $8 a month system. Wait. Don't I have people who review accounts and make sure stuff like this doesn't happen? Where are they? Where are all the employees? So Twitter asked many of the people they had let go to come back. According to Elon though, they never fired people who did content reviews, so it wasn't because of the verification mess. Rather, there's the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Act. In the USA, you can't let go more than 33% of your employees without a 60-day notice. So instead of paying everyone, they had let go for 60 more days. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Twitter told them, you can come back, but you gotta let us know. Also, you have two hours. As it so happens, they sent that out on the weekend. Whoops. Not everyone saw it. Now, they could say that everyone who didn't respond in that time frame refused to work on their own. They quit, okay? Twitter didn't fire them. And a few days later, it was time for some more layoffs. 80% of contract workers were let go without warning. That day, Elon also apologized for Twitter being slow in some countries, blaming the engineers. Eric, a Twitter engineer, wasn't having it. He replied that Elon was wrong. Eric went into a full explanation as to why Twitter is slower in some countries. One of the reasons being that it's bloated with useless features nobody uses. And some random guy was like, with this kind of attitude, you probably don't want this guy on your team, Elon. Somehow this convinced Elon and he fired Eric. But of course, Twitter still did what Eric had suggested, turning off all bloated features. The next day, Elon set an ultimatum to all workers. They gotta be hardcore or leave. Either work 60 hours a week or zero. So some people quit. Following that, an ex-Twitter employee said that I know of six critical systems which no longer have any engineers. But to be honest, so far it's alright. I'm recording this at the end of November and Twitter's still up. So it definitely wasn't complete idiocy to fire all these people. Elon Musk then announced that all verified fake accounts must put parody in their name. To be more precise, accounts doing parody impersonations. Basically, tricking people is not okay. Now what if I told you, the people who do this think it's kinda funny. SpaceX saying they would focus on saving this planet instead of visiting a new one is just such a rich joke. Because that's what these accounts are. Jokes. Comedy. But wait, didn't Elon say comedy is legal now? I guess if him or companies lose money, the fun ends. From the start, Elon's Twitter deal was turbulent and messy. Often, something was announced and then the opposite happened. No decision was long term. Workers were fired, then brought back, only to be fired if they weren't hardcore. In the middle of November, after most of the dust had settled, the investment firm Wetbush Securities estimated Twitter's value to be $25 billion, which is a bit less than the $44 billion Elon had paid. According to them, this was one of the most overpaid tech acquisitions in history.